Uh, two of my kids were just uh, were just in New York last weekend. Uh, they Jealous. were out there. Yeah, yeah. I got to do a little Empire State of Mind. Uh, went to the NBA headquarters, and uh, they came back very happy. Thought they had a great time. So uh, John Jastrzemski, host of New York, New York on the Ringer, the podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the uh, for the hospitality. Can we start out that way? And guys, my pleasure. I'm glad you enjoyed the five boroughs. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Uh, the weather's miserable here. I haven't touched the golf club in a few weeks, but aside from that, everything's all right. All right. Well, I'm going to play nine holes later, so na 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 na. But I feel like I, I, I want to say that because I, I, I also want to let you gloat if that's what you want to do. We out here in the Bay Area felt a drum beat for about six weeks, maybe even longer. We're getting Aaron Judge. And and every New York person I talked to was like, you guys are adorable. You think you're getting Aaron Judge. And uh, you sunned us. Like, you 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 guys were all completely right. Like, we were adorable for thinking that we were going to get Aaron Judge. You know, that's the way I felt, full disclosure. But when the Heyman tweet, Arson Judge to Giants, came out, <laughs> uh, there was a stunned look at disbelief in my face saying, wow. He's actually leaving the Yankees. The Yankees are allowing their face of the franchise to go to his hometown, San Francisco Giants. But then when the Giants didn't close the deal that night, and it's still kind of open-ended going into the next morning, I, I kind of had a feeling the Yankees would up the ante. And listen, I, I don't think it's necessarily an anti-Giants thing. He just has so much cooking in New York, guys. He's the face of the franchise. He's got the record now for home runs. He's going to end up in Monument Park when it's all said and done. And they took care of him. That's like that, that's really, really tough to walk away from. And I'll ask you guys this. Who is the guy that's been this, like, marquee, star player, face of the franchise type of dude that's left the Yankees? That, it, it just does not happen. So I, that's why I think the Yankee fan was confident. That's why most New Yorkers were confident. And, hey, your team pivots, Carlos Correa, and away you go. Well, and the other for, the former giant, the the Yankees did sign Carlos Rodon. I was kind of surprised he got the length and the size of the deal that he got. What were your thoughts on that? See, I loved it, and I understand the concerns about his durability, and he doesn't go deep in the game. You guys saw last year in San Francisco. That guy has filthy, nasty type of stuff. He misses bats. The Yankees had to try to improve upon the team that got smoked against the Houston Astros a year ago. That's kind of a creative way to do it. Yankees got a hit against the Astros, but now you look at their rotation. Cole, Rodon, Cortez, who I love. He's got all the funk. He's got all the flair. He's the real deal. Severino, and if that stiff Montez can give him anything. I mean, the Yankees got to stop dealing with the Oakland A's. Because anytime they get an Oakland pitcher, it's a total disaster. But if he can give him anything, I mean, you're talking about the best rotation in all of baseball. So, hefty contract, but the Yankees acting like the Yankees again. Refreshing. Yeah, but John, is like, and, and this is where I've worked myself. I know that there's so much tradition to what you're talking about. But out here, I think we knew all along Rodon was going to end up elsewhere. And if you told me, if you told me that the executive branch of my favorite baseball team wrote in Sharpie right now, we will never sign another starting pitcher for a five plus year deal ever again. I, I think I'd support it. I like I understand it. It makes sense. No, I totally understand that. And the history of these contracts now tells us that they normally don't work out. But I think the way baseball operates, and maybe this is the Steve Cohen effect, that he came to the Mets, he spent the money like a drunken sailor. And now you've seen all these teams kind of follow suit, whether it's your team giving Correa 13 years or it's the Phillies or it's the Padres or the Yankees going nine years at 31 years old for Aaron Judge. It's kind of the way you got to do business. And I, I think for a lot of these owners, what's going to end up happening is year six, year seven, year eight, you're going to have to take the L on these deals. You're going to have to pivot. And, guys, i got to be honest, I don't feel the least bit sorry for these owners. They make a gazillion dollars. They can figure it out. You think I'm crying about Hal Steinbrenner having to eat a year or two on Carlos Rodon? <laughs> so be it. If he helps the Yankees go win a World Series, which is something they have not done in 13 years, I'm not going to be that concerned. 
I, I'm really not. About Rodon, about Judge. Uh, you think the Mets are going to feel bad about giving Justin Verlander $42 million a year if he pitches them the World Series this year? That's the way you got to behave now in Major League Baseball. That's just the cost of doing business. No doubt. The other way the Bay Area and New York are kind of tied right now is the Warriors are in New York. They're going to play the Knicks tonight. They're, they got the Nets tomorrow. The Knicks got off to a little bit of a slow start. They've won seven in a row, including four of those on the road. What the hell got into the Knicks, man? Well, guys, if you would have told me at the start of this year that the Knicks would be four-and-a-half-point home favorites against the Golden State Warriors, <laughs> I would have given you like 100-1 to one odds. So that's, that's number one, and I understand why. The great Curry, the future Hall of Famer, not going to play on Tuesday night. The Knicks, they are what they are. Like, they weren't as bad as they were earlier in the year where they were losing some games they shouldn't have won. They couldn't figure out how to end late-game execution. Um, their three best players are playing really good ball. Listen, Jalen Brunson's contract seemed excessive. He's a really good player. I mean, the basketball IQ is off the charts. The guy is – the he, you want the ball in his hands at the end of these games because you know he's going to make a smart basketball decision. And maybe, fellas, this is due to the fact that the Knicks haven't had a point guard in my life for like 25, 30 plus years, whether it's Derek Harper or before my time with Mark Jackson or whatnot, they've been craving a point guard. So to have that finally is so refreshing. Randall has been much better. He was a disaster last year. He's closer to what he was two years ago. And Barrett's kind of come on. Thibodeau's figured out the rotation. They've beaten some teams they should beat within the Eastern Conference. And Look, I'll be real with you. They have no hope of winning a championship. They would be lucky to win it. If they won a first-round series, there's going to be a parade down the Canyon of Heroes. <laughs> so, you know, they'll probably make the playoffs. They compete. They play hard. They're going to win in the 40s. That's what they are as a team. So they'll be spunky. New York, New York, the podcast on the ringer. John Jastrzemski is our guest here on 95.7 The Game, Willard and Dibs with Kyle in for Dibs today. What about the opponent they're playing tomorrow night, John? Uh, like, I really hesitate to buy into this win streak. The Nets are starting to actually look like a talented team instead of the real basketball players of New York, which is the show that they've been running for the last two years since KD and Kyrie arrived. H has it finally settled? Are we buying into this now, or, or is, is this just temporary? Well, for me, I still need to see more. But I have to admit, it got so toxic and so chaotic early in the year with Kyrie Irving and his ridiculous shenanigans and then the firing of Steve Nash, where I kind of wondered, are they just going to blow this bad boy up? Are they going to send Kyrie to L.A.? Are they going to let Kevin Durant go where he wants to go? And is he going to end up getting traded to Phoenix or wherever? And then kind of under the radar, they fire Nash, they bring in Jacques Vaughn, and they've kind of figured it out. Listen, Durant and Irving – are, are insane talents. You guys know that. You saw Kevin Durant come to the Bay Area and, and win a couple of championships. He's playing Kevin Durant like basketball. Kyrie is the guy who's making the big shot at the end of these games. But I still need to see more. Because you know with this team, they could go off the rails within a week or two. They are talent-wise within that top four in the Eastern Conference. Are they better than Boston? No, I don't think they're as well-rounded. Are they better than Milwaukee? No, I don't think they're as deep. I don't think they're as good. But you can easily sell me on Brooklyn being the third best team in the Eastern Conference. So you keep Durant happy and healthy. You keep Kyrie on the floor and he's engaged and motivated. You can have a successful season. Now, how do you measure that success? That's, uh, that's for you to determine. Like, to me, the Nets, they didn't bring this team together to go and get to the second round of the playoffs. The idea was, hey, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are going to win a championship. And if you're asking me, do I think they get that done in their tenure? I'm still putting my money on now. It's a few weeks away still, but the Niners are currently in line to play the Giants, to host the Giants in the first round of the playoffs. Can the Giants make noise when they get there? Because when I look at the teams that the Niners could play, the Giants are like at the top of the list if I'm the 49ers of teams that I would want to play. Can the Giants make noise? Absolutely not. But, <laughs> fellas, the fact, that, the fact that the Giants this year, with the talent that is on their roster, they have the worst pairing group of wide receivers in the NFL. And that includes the Houston Texans. Worst group of receivers in the NFL. They got all sorts of injuries in their secondary. 
they basically set this up to be a rebuilding year with the new GM and with Brian Dable in his first year. The fact that they're going to make the playoffs is absurd. There is, To me, there is no conversation and debate with Coach of the Year in the NFL. I don't want to hear about Sirianni. I don't want to hear about O'Connell. I'm a Dolphins fan, and I love the dude. I don't want to hear about Mike McDaniel. Brian Dable with that roster to get them in the playoffs, give him Coach of the Year tomorrow. That all being said, if I'm the Niners, and guys, by the way, I may be invested in the Niners to win the Super Bowl for mm-hmm. the, of the year, so there is a, a little bit of a vested interest here. I'm just throwing that out there. That said, I think the Niners would obliterate the Giants. I don't know how the Giants would block them. The Giants would have no answer for all the speed they can throw out there. I mean, let's be real. Who is the team in the first round that would scare you at all from a Niner perspective? The commanders who they're playing this week? Please. You know what I actually think would be the toughest matchup for them? Detroit. Detroit. The Lions, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, we said it yesterday. There's no doubt, John. Detroit would be that team. But listen, house money for the Giants. They're going to make the playoffs. That was a great win for them on Sunday. As far as them making noise, no, not at all. <laughs> all right, John, I love everything you said except for one thing. I understand why you said it and why you feel that way based on talent, and the talent disparity between the two teams is great. But coach of the year goes to whoever is still a favorite when they're on their third quarterback. That's who gets coach of the year. Well, listen, your guy's great, man. I love him. You know, I get the comparison. You guys can tell uh, Shanahan this. I, I look like him a little bit. I get that a lot when I wear like the, you know, tall skinny I see guys. It. Yeah, yeah. Do you, wear, do you wear trucker hats, John? Do you do that? No, I'm not into the trucker hat. Okay. I don't, I don't do the trucker hat. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing one right now. So is Kyle, by the no, way. Hey, whatever works, man. Oh, no, no. Yours is, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you do. I see it. I see the look. A little bit. A little bit. But your team is loaded. You know, like, eh, come on. Come on. To me, when you got a team that stinks and you squeeze every last ounce out of them, that to me is what I'm looking for in the coach of the year. Hey, your team just go win a Super Bowl. Forget about individual accolades and awards. I mean, (laughs) go get to and win a Super Bowl. Yeah, that table has been very impressive. That's the plan, but I still, you're not wrong about the roster. It's loaded, but, but Mr. Irrelevant is playing quarterback and normally in the NFL. That's a deal breaker. You know what I mean? Um, what's going to be interesting with you guys, he wins a game or two in the playoffs. Garoppolo can come back maybe for that championship game. Uh, you talk about a tough decision for mm-hmm. Shanahan. Easy oh, one. Man. Easy decision. Easy decision. You, you don't stick with the kid? What do you do? You stick with the kid? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you imagine if this kid drives them all the way to the NFC title game, no, and then they inject the someone I mean, else. Now, they, here's the, 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 the caveat to that, though. You're playing the Eagles. It's a 10 nothing game, and Purdy throws two interceptions. Then maybe you think about Garoppolo for the second half of that game. But we are, we are eons away from that. Yeah, yeah. we sure are. No we sure are. Hey, John, a lot of fun to talk to you, man. Thanks for doing it. Guys, anytime. Happy holidays to you guys, all right? All right. Thank